Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. The teaching this morning on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. I want you to be sensitive this morning because teach there will be a lot of impartations this morning as I teach because I'm talking about the Holy Spirit you sang about him and you jumped up and down his presence is mighty in this place you are awesome in this place mighty in this place you do wonders in this place thank you God hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Bring her. Shalom. Watch the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's it. Take her back. Mighty Jesus. Who is this mighty spirit of the living God? This awesome, majestic, powerful personality that our entire lives depend on when you get to know the reality of this spirit hallelujah when you get to understand what his ministry is in the church today you will know that there is nothing religious about this faith life there is nothing denominational about this faith life this is an experience hallelujah when he made himself real to me i knew i knew that there was something more like we sang yesterday something is already happening to you god is opening you up to more for Jesus Christ to send and recommend the Holy Spirit to the church, it's important that we understand what ministry is. Hallelujah. But before I talk about I want to be as simple as possible. The goal of my teaching is to confuse you. Help me some people. Thank you. The goal of my teaching is to confuse you at all. It's to bring you to understand comprehension. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So is there really a personality called the Holy Spirit? That's the first question. Because there are people who don't believe in the person of the Holy Spirit. They believe in Jesus. They believe in other things. But every time you talk about the Holy Spirit, there is this resentment. Listen, let me tell you something about mindset. Now, we represent different churches, different denominations, different ministries, different sects, you know, and so on and so forth. Everything you know today about God, somebody taught you. 
Is that true? You grew up with an ideology. And that ideology has become your plane of judgment. You make judgment based on the information that you have been given. And now the sad truth is that most of the things we have been trained to understand and believe are wrong. It's just that you've grown up with it. All right? Your whole life depends on that mentality. And so sometimes when the word of God comes to attack that thing, you resent it because it's like recycling your whole life again. There are many of us that have built our entire Christian experience on a lie. Hallelujah. And this is why when the Holy Spirit comes, He comes to bring up to your life. He comes to re-edit everything. Don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the teaching. I just want you to understand that this is what is happening to you. There are some of you right here, you've been amazed at all the things that are happening. What is all this? What is happening to me? It's not taught like this. In my church, people don't fall under the anointing. What does this mean? I don't even understand. This is an experience. You must always maintain that position of a student when you come to the school of the spirit because there is always more than what you know is that true and the fact that it has not become a reality to you does not mean it's not a reality is that true for instance if we say there is a white car parked outside whether you've seen it or not does not change the fact that it is there you can refuse it you can debate it you can argue it but it doesn't stop that fact so I, as i begin to teach this morning many of you are going to hear things that will rattle the foundation of your religious theology it's up to you to say look let's explore let's see what the word religion is a spirit are you getting me religion is a wicked demonic spirit it's not a sect god never gave us a in fact let me shock you he never christian what christian was the testimony of pagans to those like christ is that true the church in antioch so as we begin to teach i have a few minutes this morning i'll try to maximize it i want your heart to be open there are many of you i tell you as you are listening to me you will have supernatural encounters you are just caught up while you are listening the bible says and while peter speak these things the holy ghost fell on all them that heard him hallelujah you must choose a time must come in your life and destiny when you've got to tell yourself i am tired i've had pastor a i've had prophet b i've had apostle c it's time to hear god so that my conviction is not based on what pastor said or what reverend said no, or what my father taught me but it has become my god the samaritan woman said come he said i'm not just the people told the samaritan woman we don't just believe because you brought us now we have seen there is something about persuasion and conviction when you are convicted about a reality are you following me now i always give this example my brother if i call you a woman will you pray about it why there are too many things that have happened in your life that has crystallized in you that you are not a woman is that true but if i have a scientific way of confusing you right now and you just turn to your brother and say ah, maybe it's true that means something is wrong but do you know if you were born a man and everybody surrounding you started convincing you you're a woman and although you're a man you will grow up believing you're a woman this is the power of ideologies see the gospel is not a salvation message alone it's an ideology it's a value system are you getting my point it's a programming it's a code of operation that is put in you that exalts christ and his values and his system above every other thing so let your heart be open this morning let that wall of religion and sentiments and all the things that we have grown up believing can you compare it with the world today 
and let the Holy Spirit bring you into an experience that is bigger and richer. Many of us may not enter certain realms because of the hardness in our heart. If it's not the way I used to see it, if it's not the way, I'm not talking about rebellion and childishness and, and the flesh and carnality. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an experience that rattles what has convinced you that is the scope of your entire Christian experience. There is more. Say there is more. So is the Holy Spirit real? Genesis chapter 1. From verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, Now the earth was dark. Verse 2. And the earth was without, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters. Hallelujah. Now, just to let you know that what happens is chapter 1 verse 2. I'm sure that many of us have wondered, why will God create the heavens and the earth? And suddenly you will see darkness and you will see void. Is that true? I need you to know that between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2, there were lots of events that happened. Are you getting my point? Genesis 1 verse 1 talks of, of the eternal beginning. No man can know it except the one who created it himself. Are you getting me? Between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2, there was the judgment of Lucifer. Are you following me now? We're not talking about all of those things. The judgment of Lucifer. Lucifer was once a cherub in heaven. One that walked upon the holy mountain. There was the earth those days. The Bible says how that he walked it from the object of worship. It was the lightning. When thunder strikes, that light was the substance God used. Hallelujah. They, they were an express splendor. In the angelic realm, there are different cadres of angels. There are messenger angels. Hallelujah. And then there are seraphs. And above the seraphs, the head of the seraphs is the cherubim. The head of the cherubim is the woman. The head of the woman is the man. The head of man is the head of Christ is God. This is the hierarchy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this is how it was. But before the creation of that man and woman, hallelujah, the closest to God was the cherubim. And among all of the cherubs, many of the cherubs in heaven, Lucifer, the son of the morning, Apollyon, Leviathan, all of them were cherubs in heaven. And the Bible says there was a conspiracy. Ezekiel 28. You don't need to go there. Lucifer began to make a propaganda because he felt God was unfair. There's a lot I may not say here because of that. But because of that propaganda, together with a third of the angels, they mobilized a rebellion because Lucifer was the closest angel to the presence of God. It reflected on his personality. He was not only the archangel in charge of worship, he was the archangel in charge of justice. This is why when you ask occultists and those there, they tell you that there is something God did to Satan that was unfair. That's what they keep saying. Revelation calls him a murderer. When was that story? Where did it happen? See, because they gave birth to you in the middle of history. And most preachers don't know what happened or what is to come. We are just in the middle of history. Most of us just deceiving ourselves. But the Bible says the men of Issachar they had understanding of the times. This is part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He says, and when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. He will guide you. You will walk accurately. It's not the issue of, is it this, is it that? No. Circumspectly, with wisdom and accuracy. It's the spirit of revelation. This was the prayer that Paul prayed in the book of Ephesians. From chapter 1 verse 17 don't don't turn there he says for this cause i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know come into a comprehension of certain realities hallelujah and so it was the judgment of lucifer and this, this was a very long time. 
Hallelujah. Everything I'm telling you is in scripture. But except God opens your eyes, the Bible will remain a storybook. Hallelujah. And then in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, this was after the judgment. Because you see, flood in scripture is symbolic of judgment. I hope you know the waters came out of, I mean the land came out of. Is that true? Land came out of water. Even the animals came out of water. It's in your Bible. Water has always been associated with abundance. Let's continue. Praise the Lord. And then in chapter 1 verse 3, Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Greek word there is Elohim. Singular is Eloha, one of the Trinity. And Elohim said, Let there be light. This was not an original creation of heaven and earth because there was. This was a recreation. Are you getting my point? What happened in Genesis 1 verse 3 is not the first time. Many preachers have told you this is the first time. No, no, it's not true. You go and ask scientists, they will carbon date rocks and tell you there are millions of years. Is that true? But now we say in earth's time we are over 6,000 years. That tells you that there was a lot of other stories. This is the missing link between religion and science. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And he said, let there be light. I hope you know this light was not sunlight. Of course, it could not have been sunlight. Because on the fourth day, that was when God made light. Are you getting me? That tells you this counting of seven days was not seven human days. Because you start counting in time only when there is sun. But God said the evening and the morning came. He started counting even before sun came. Is that true? Is that in your Bible? According to the eternal timing of God, one year is 1,000 years. Is that true? I mean, one eternal year is 1,000 earth years. You need to understand this. I'm building so that you can understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then God was going to use a lot of things. Do you know why the earth was created? before man will be saved. When the Bible says God made man from the dust of the earth, he made Adam. Adam is not necessarily a man. The word dust, mankind, dust is Adam itself. Are you getting me? What it means is the material of man's creation was sourced from his environment. The bones of man was made from stone. The hair of man was made from grass. See that? The veins of man was made from the roots of trees. <laughs> Let's talk about the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about something else. I'm not sure. We've not started and I'm seeing a lot of people saying, what is this? Where are you coming from this? Don't deceive us. It's alright. So. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the powers. You have taken all the worship. You have made them yours. The highest praise to the King. See, there is revelation that when you have, it will sponsor your worship. Are you getting my point? This is what it means by God is mighty. You know, many times when we say God is mighty, what makes him mighty? The psalm is new. So he began to speak in Psalm 8. He said, when I consider the works of your hands, the stars and so on, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou visitest him. He said, you have made him a little lower than Elohim. The word there is not angel as in seraphs, Elohim, the deity, the trinity, and crowned him with glory and virtue. You have set him above the works of your hands. When you understand creation and you understand what God has done for man, see, anyway, Genesis 1 verse 3, let's continue the 
or verse 2 genesis 1 verse 2 the first revelation of the holy spirit as given from scripture is found in genesis 2 and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters so we see the manifestation the first revelation of the person of the trinity is what the spirit is that true now the original name of i hope you know that jesus was not the original name of the second person of the trinity he only be jesus was a name they gave him in the earth is that true what was his original name john 1 1 in the beginning is in your bible was and that word was seated with and that word himself was it's in your bible are you getting my point revelations 19 talks about the one seated on the white horse that had a name that no man knew he said his name is the word of god remember when john was caught up in the isle of patmos after he was thrown into oil and he could not die you know why john could not die because of his encounter there abided three faith hope and love this was a symbolism of peter james and john all right and then john was the type of love and love is the greatest so nothing in this time could destroy him hallelujah so in the book of revelations we see that he was banished in the isle of patmos and where he was there the visions of the lord were given unto him revelations 1 he said i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i saw as it were he saw the array of the throne room and he saw the four living creatures everything in the throne room reflects the nature of god there were four living creatures one was what a lion type of the royalty and the strength and dominion of god the second that connotes to the book of matthew that reveals christ as king is that true and the second was the calf a revelation of the spirit of servanthood and that's the book of luke i mean matthew what mark all right the third is the face of a man expressing his humanity and that's the book of luke the second is the face of the eagle that connotes his divinity these were the four living creatures so everything in heaven was a reflection and he said i saw seven lampstands candlesticks and that candlestick talks of the complete church what we call the catholic church all right not catholic as a denomination the word catholic means universal the church of the firstborn that church that comes to mount zion that church of the firstborn where there is an innumerable company of angels where there are spirits of just men made perfect where there is the blood of cleansing that church that church that christ will come to meet as the king of we kings when the spirit of elijah comes and purges the church and there is we are prepared as a bride decked for her husband the church is the eve of the second adam who is christ are you seeing that now This word that you are hearing is doing something in you. It's transforming you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but he shall live by not just every word like Rema, Rema. No, if it is the word of God, it is backed up by his spirit and life. So it does something to you. Thank you, Jesus. So we see that john began to write about so many things he was given an instruction he said write the things that were the things that were meant that all that had happened in the church age until that time the things that are is the church dispensation is that true encapsulated in what we call the seven churches the word seven is a prophetic number for perfection so all of those church in smyrna church in pagamos although they were real churches like that in asia minor but they had prophetic meanings and the last church is the laodicean church and you compare it is exactly what is happening in the church in nigeria because you see nigeria is a prophetic nation i hope you know that nigeria is a prophetic nation before christ comes before christ comes listen nigeria will present to the world 
the true portrait of apostolic Christianity. Listen, there's no time I would have shown you from the days of Noah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that if we suffer with him, we will partake of his glory. Is that true? The black race will reflect the glory of God. Because when Christ was as a curse going to the cross, he was a black man called what? Simon of where? Cyrene. He carried the cross for him. That was the continent of Africa. Prophetically represented in a black man. The only continent that went with Jesus up to the cross. So there is a revelation. Because of that, it has been given to us to reflect the glory of Christ. That's why in the 60s and 70s, the prophetic mandate and the emphasis of God was in the continent of Europe. Where there were great men, Smith Wigglesworth and all of those great people. And eventually it shifted to America. When it shifted to America, there was an intercourse between them and a system called Babylon. That she goddess that sits upon the horse in Revelation, holding the blood of Matthias. That harlot beast, that woman, that Jezebel spirit. Jezebel was not just the wife of Ahab. She was a spirit. She reimagines in Revelation again. You see Jezebel in the book of Revelation. So she was not just a woman. Jezebel was a type, a portrait of a wicked system. America began to intercourse with them. And many of the sermons, the messages we believe today, were shipped from America into Nigeria. Some of these things are the doctrines, the Bible calls the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. Popular, but erroneous. Are you following me this morning? And so from there, because they, there was too much perversion in the American church, the emphasis of God shifted to Asia, the continent of Asia. And in Asia, they were able to preserve the precepts of God because of the spirit of holiness. The church of God in Asia is a church that is notable in the spirit for holiness. Hallelujah. But because of the prophetic things God is doing, I want you to know that the emphasis of God right now is in the church in Africa. And the church in Africa, there are three nations that the Lord revealed to me that will carry that prophetic mandate. South Africa, Ghana, and Nigeria. Listen to me. Nigeria will play the apostolic role south africa will play the kingly role and ghana will play the prophetic role but while these mandates drop in the ghana church they started corrupting prophecy with witchcraft and so god withdrew all the mandates and hid them in nigeria right now today these things are not hidden with men of god those who carry these mantles do not yet know they are like david in the cave of adulam and god is training them using campus fellowships using training grounds disguising these people when the shofar blows that great army will arise there's an army rising now they are not yet on tv you have not seen them they don't even know they are called they are busy in the wilderness in the cave of adulam going through disciplines and strict trainings of the spirit they are the men that will live like gods upon the earth. Listen. This is the reason why you see that there is a lot of hostility from hell. Boko Haram, story stories. It's not just politics alone. They can discern the stars and they know that they are shifting in the spirit. Remember when Jesus was born, the spirit of the Antichrist contacted Herod immediately. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. And Herod, because all these guys use astrology and zodiac and necromancy, they could project to the astral realm and peep, have a picture of what was happening in the earth. So they knew that something was wrong. And then those wise men were following the stars. They were not born again. They were simply competent astrologers who had understanding of times. And Herod said, go and look for him and tell me so that I will go and worship him. That's what is happening to frost all the joblessness in Nigeria. All of these things, these are plans from the kingdom of darkness.
to frustrate the concentration of young people to stay and receive that prophetic mantle the eyes of the whole world is in nigeria have you not seen that there are few men of god outside that are now invited in nigeria have you not seen that it suddenly ceased before if you had a conference and a white man was not there but eventually something happened it was a chapter that was closed because it's time for god to begin to work on this nation there's no time i would have shown you nigeria from the bible nigeria is in the bible isaiah 18 it's not about lord lugard amalgamating nigeria it had nothing to do with those things a nation whose rivers divide river niger and benway it's in your bible we are products of prophecy what am i teaching for god's sake we're supposed to be talking about the holy spirit forgive me no i can't ride on i have to walk with what holy spirit please let's teach the reality of the holy spirit how real is the holy spirit genesis 1 we see it hallelujah we see that the spirit of god please listen the spirit of god is revealed there as being a real spirit is that true proof number two the bible tells us remember at the baptism of jesus listen please remember when john when john was coming out of the water is that true the bible says that i mean when jesus sorry was baptized by john right when jesus came out of the water the bible says and the heavens opened is that true and what happened the holy ghost came he didn't say he says in the form he didn't say he was a dove in the form the only way they could describe that experience with human eyes was a dove are you getting me now but it was not a dove he came in the likeness of a dove so we see the manifestation of the holy spirit is that true and that was the word now incarnate the christ jesus is that true and then we see another voice from heaven that confirms the trinity isn't it because there are many people who say there is no word trinity in the bible but we see the expressions of trinity so we see the reality of the person of the holy spirit in the book of acts chapter 7 when stephen was about to be stoned the matthias stephen remember the bible says how that stephen was what full of the holy ghost all right his eyes being opened he saw into heaven and he saw what the father seated and the son glorified now standing so we see the trinity again hallelujah everybody say the holy spirit is real now the reason why many people doubt the reality of the holy spirit is because in our human nature we are only used to dealing with things that are three-dimensional and engaged in bodily form are you getting my point now it was only through facebook and twitter and whatsapp and all of these social media that we are seeing that it is possible to be friends with somebody you have never seen and know the person so much and even you can discern he is not happy all of these extra components it was the social media that opened us up the closest thing that we knew was what they used to teach us in school those days called pen pal remember those old school things our parents did pen pal just write a letter and ship it to whoever but now with the social media you can someone can text you and you can even be grieved and feel why are you not happy that means it is possible to relate with a man that you have not seen with your optical eyes hallelujah are you learning something this morning thank you jesus the holy spirit is a real person hallelujah our fathers in the village and all the priests that deal with these demon entities they understand what it means to communicate with beings that are not bounded in this mortal form because of the ministry of the holy spirit he does not have that confined body that would just sit down in one place and it was simply because of the nature and the operation so every time the holy spirit is mentioned in scripture he's associated with certain things he's associated with wind he's associated with fire he's associated with 
the dove is that true what else is associated with candlesticks water and so on and so forth but i want you to know that the holy spirit is a real person everybody said the holy spirit is a real person he can be understood and you can relate with him hallelujah praise the lord now the ministry of the holy spirit what is the function of the holy spirit in the earth realm today why did jesus send him what is his relevance to the body why do we talk so much about the holy spirit is he really necessary see because if you do not understand if you think the function of the holy ghost is just to make men of god alone then there will be no reason to pursue intimacy with this person called the holy spirit hallelujah so when the charismatic movement brought about the revelation of the holy spirit the azusa street revival you know and all of these other things when they brought the reality of the person of the holy spirit at best the average nigerian christian just knows that okay what the holy spirit can do is when you are born again they lay hands on you and you just talk blah, 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 and then that's all they just know that okay you pray in tongues once you pray in tongues you know the holy spirit is that true impossible it doesn't make sense don't you see them fake tongues in nigerian film somebody you, you know is not born again but maybe he's acting as a pastor right when he's about to leave and he will pray and, and he sounds and, and the demon person is shaking and so on and so forth the holy spirit is beyond praying in tongues he's beyond rolling on the floor and falling down are you getting my point he's beyond an electric feeling that makes you shake those things are expressions they are they are outworkings of his ministry the holy spirit is a person he's not an anointing he's not oil in a bottle please listen to me he's a real person if that crystallizes in your mind then we can understand his ministry hallelujah and the best way to understand the ministry of jesus this is the complete or the ministry of the holy spirit is to see how he worked with the prophets of old all right see his ministry in the old testament one two see his ministry in the life of jesus christ two and then three see his ministry in the life of the first fruits of redemption the apostles the book of acts but because of time it will take us days and days to explore this because we must see how did the holy ghost work with elijah how did the holy ghost work with with um samson how did the holy ghost work with all of these people when you see his ministry in their lives all of the prophets both the minor and the major prophets because the bible says holy men spake as they were moved this was the revelation that was given apostle peter he said no scripture is of personal interpretation is that true he said but holy men they spoke as they were what moved by the holy ghost so we see a dimension of his ministry how did he move them into these experiences then we look at the life of jesus the christ one who was born a little baby i hope you know when they gave birth to jesus he could die is that true he could die that's why they ran away with him why will you run away with somebody that cannot die is that true but a time came when the holy ghost came the bible says they took him to a cliff to throw him he just walked in between them and left the problem is if they had killed him listen listen this blood i hope you know jesus came it was a combination of two lives right because he was not born of a human a man the seed of a man was not involved in his being pregnant it was the holy ghost that played the fathery role of jesus can you imagine the holy ghost turn almighty word to become a seed and planted him in a woman this is how mighty he is are you following me suddenly mary just found out that her stomach started protruding joseph said no way i'm not ready to take any responsibility let's just go and break quietly and the angel told him uh-uh for that which is in high is a holy thing 
was of God. So when the Holy Ghost came upon him, the Bible tells us that he began to do mighty things. He parted the waters. He began to do so many things. Hallelujah. When he was about to die, I've said it, the, the death of Jesus, listen, Jesus did not die on the cross. He finished his death on the cross. Right? He didn't just, that was not where death started. If you understand what happened to Adam, look up. What happened to Adam? The Bible says, in the day that you eat of that fruit, you will do what? Did he die that day? Answer me, did he die that day? How many other years in earth's time did he live? That means God was not the author of death. Death was the natural consequence of the nature of sin in man. Through death, Paul speaking says what? He says through sin, death came. Is that true? It was a product of the deterioration of man's body. By the way, let me give you another shot of revelation. Just to absorb as we continue. The Garden of Eden is still intact. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Scientists are trying fruitlessly to find... The Garden of Eden was not in the earth realm. Are you hearing me? It was not in the earth realm at all. Go to Revelations. You still see the tree of life there. Is that not your... When the Bible says man fell short of the standard of God, let me tell you what that means. Okay, let me prove to you, just a simple proof. Do you know that when God drove man out of the garden, is that true? Look at the entities that were made to protect it. Did God put a gate? What did he put? A cherubim and a flaming sword. Why will a cherubim and a flaming sword guard a physical place like this. Lord, I give you my heart, give you my soul. I live for you. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Have your way. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. Every breath that I take. Would you have your way? So here comes this dangerous man just evolved john was baptizing and suddenly he looks at this person and he says behold the lamb of god because while he was in the wilderness waiting the spirit of god taught him certain things and he said it himself that the spirit told him that whoever he sees this dove rest upon that is the lamb that will be slain hallelujah are you getting my point now and so the holy ghost came upon jesus christ from there he moved with his disciples and they watched him do a lot of things now i hope you know that the disciples were not born again nobody could have been born again until jesus resurrected is that true but they were walking with jesus and they were happy because they had suffered so much and they were hoping that when jesus now conquers because there was a prophecy about the nation of israel how that they would come back as one people is that true and so they thought this messiah was going to be the great person no one could kill him no one could destroy him so they started walking listen and this is a lesson do you know the disciples followed jesus not because they loved him they followed him because they loved themselves and they saw an opportunity to shine are you getting my point so they were following jesus Jesus had become such a celebrity to an extent that even when his mother and his brothers wanted to see him, the disciples were doing the protocol work. They said, yes, how can we help you? 
said, please, we want to see Jesus. No, 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 no. It's busy. Follow my story. At a point, the mother of James and John said, the way this man is going, he's going to conquer Caesar. So let's start arranging this thing so that when it happens, we can sit on the left and right, correct? James and John said, oh yeah, you mommy, go and talk to him. Now, are you following me now? And Jesus looked at them and said, you people don't even know why I am here. You are busy thinking of political positions for yourself. He said, can you drink of the cup I am going to drink with and be baptized with my baptism? So when he said, that's why the, the disciples started fighting themselves. Because at the point they started discovering one another's secret, just like many of us do. Then, at a point it looked like Jesus was shining alone. And they got angry and they said, Jesus, we have left everything to follow you. Tell us now. You know, you can imagine Peter, I'm married. Don't let my wife leave me. We have left everything to follow you. What is our court in this thing? We are not keeping quiet now. And Jesus looked at them. He said, now I get you. Verily, verily, there's no man who has left houses and all of these things to follow me who will not receive in this life. They still were not satisfied. Because I hope you know that when he took Peter, James and John to the Mount of Transfiguration, in the Mount of Transfiguration, he revealed to them who his spirit man was. That was what they saw. The real spirit man. That was why they saw that light. And the Bible says, as we behold him, we become changed into that transfigured person. It is the word that brings us into that revelation. Hallelujah. So, Peter, James and John, together with Jesus, left. Now it was time for the disciples to shine. Now they brought an epileptic patient. They were so happy. We can make a name for ourselves like Nimrod. And the Bible says they struggled and struggled. People gathered. They were embarrassed. The thing pained them. When Jesus suddenly came down. When Jesus helped the person, they met him. And said, Why couldn't we cast this out? Why are you doing this? Help us. Give us this thing too so that we can shine together. So it was not their love for God. I'm helping you understand the Bible. Are you getting my point now? Then, John 14. Jesus began to speak to them. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Verse 1. John 14 verse 1. Are you there? John 14 verse 1. Jesus began to speak and he said, Let not your heart be troubled. He said, Ye believe in God, believe in me also. Hallelujah. He says, For in my father's house there are many mansions. Hallelujah. Then he says, if it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. He says, when I go and prepare that place for you, I will come back so that I will take you. So that where I am, you may be there also. All those things were stories for the disciples as far as they were concerned. They were not hearing anything because they started getting afraid. They found out that at a point Jesus did not want to be with them alone. A again, are you getting my point? He was always secluded. He was always alone. Then with Peter, James and John. And he was teaching Peter, James and John certain secrets. And Satan knew it. That was why immediately Jesus went to heaven. Notice the first person to die. Who? James. Then the devil caught Peter and wanted to kill Peter. There was a reason why he wanted these three guys to die. There was something they knew that the other apostles did not. I, they were the pillars of the church and a threefold cord cannot be easy. By the disciples in the book of Acts were praying and the Bible says an angel came and brought Peter out. Now he had killed Peter and then the next he began to target was what? John. And he found out he needed, and John died a normal death. That's the biblical proof that faith, hope, and love because James was a symbol of hope and then Peter was a symbol of faith. If it be thou, bid me come. Remember Peter and then John, the beloved, the symbol of love. I will leave my voice and I will sing. I will I will sing to my Lord and Savior. 
my God and King, I will sing holy. Help me sing holy. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give the praise to Him alone. Listen, Jesus was about to begin to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are you getting my point? Because he wanted to let them know that these things I'm doing is not because my name is Jesus. There are Mexicans today that have the name Jesus. There are footballers that have the name Jesus. As a matter of fact, Jesus is the edited form of the name. It is Jesus. That's what they call it. It's not even pronounced Jesus. Verse 15. Jesus was admonishing them. He was coming to his final days before he would die. If ye love me, keep my commands. Now, 16. He said, And I will pray the Father, uh, uh, and he will give you another comforter that he may do what abide with you forever the disciples started saying ah, what are you saying what new teaching you don't see so much of the holy spirit talked about in the book of matthew you don't you see a bit of him in mark the last chapter 16 hallelujah you see a little bit of him in luke it was the book of john that gave us an extensive description of the person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now Jesus was telling them, I will pray another comforter. 17. Verse 17. Even the spirit of truth. So he started calling him names. That there is one that walks with me. Can I have someone come? Anybody? Yes. So Jesus was saying, in the realm of the spirit, there was one that walked with me. That made me do all the great things that I was doing. Are you getting me? When he laid hands on the sick, it was not just his hand. Are you getting what I'm showing you? There was something, men just saw one man's hand. But there was an agency in the spirit. When he understood certain things, and he was saying there was someone that walked with me, that made me this mighty. And I'm about to introduce his ministry to you. He is called the spirit of truth. He says the world cannot receive him. Why? Because they do not see him. They only walk with their optical eyes. He says, but ye know him. In other words, I am playing his ministry to you now. Because I am here. But I will leave. And when I leave, my mantle, which is the Holy Ghost, will come upon you. Just like the mantle of Elijah came upon Elisha. You see that? What made me me when I was on earth will come upon you. It says, for ye know him. He dwelleth with you. So we see another ministry. The Holy Ghost walking with us. And then he shall be in you. Are you understanding something now? So we see a twofold dimension of ministry that he will play to the church. There is his ministry with them. There is his ministry in them. Are you noting it now? There's a song that is in my spirit. Onyegi Kagi. Let's sing it one more time. Verse 25, still same John 14. 
I'm opening you up to the ministry. All the stories I've been saying is to help you appreciate this thing now. These things I have spoken to you because I am present with you. Next verse, but the comforter. Now he gives him another name again. Are you seeing now? He calls him many things, comforter. He calls him the spirit that brings men into reality, truth. Which is what? Another name, the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name, in my stead. He says he will what? Teach you. How many things? I know that when many believers read this, we just say, really, yes, all things. Trust me. All things means all things. It was not just a prophetic language. All things. And he shall bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Hallelujah. Verse 15. Chapter 15, verse 26. I just want to run very quickly so that we will see what Jesus himself said about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Listen. But when the comforter, notice, he kept telling them there are other dimensions, but it's not for me to bring you inside. I'm to open the door for you and leave you with the comforter. And that comforter, that comforter will bring you into a deeper experience. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father. And he said, another ministry he shall testify. That means when he comes, he will bear witness. That means everywhere they mention my word, he will be there to bear witness that what he said is true. Are you seeing? That means every genuine man of God who is giving, because the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Every time I am teaching the truth, the Holy Ghost should be there because part of his ministry is to testify. This is how you can gauge true prophecy. It's not just by power or its physical accuracy, but the presence of the Holy Ghost. Who come? It's real. Hmm. Chapter 16. This is the part that touches me the most. I tell you, when I read these things, I cry because I understand. Chapter 16, 7. This is Jesus. He's about to depart. How many of you know that when a man is about to die, the words he's telling you is very important? Is that true? You have to take it. Jesus is about to die and he's telling the people certain things. Verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now let's see his threefold ministry in a general sense now. To the world. Are you listening to me? Verse 8. And when he is come, he will what? This is his ministry to unbelievers. So the Holy Ghost has a ministry to everybody, not just believers. Are you getting me? His primary assignment is to do something because we, are, we all started as unbelievers. Is that true? So he starts doing something. When he comes, he will reprove the world of what? Sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Hallelujah. Let's not go into all of those of sin because of this and that and that. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Let's just jump to verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. That means you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it because the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. There will be foolishness to you if I tell you. But when that spirit comes, all the things I've been telling you will suddenly start making sense. Are you getting my point? Verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? Another ministry, he will guide you. That means he will stop you from entering error. He will guide you like a shepherd guides the sheep. He will guide you to make sure that you walk in truth. For he shall not speak of himself. That means every time you hear the Holy Ghost communicate, he's only an echo 
to something that is happening in heaven he will not speak of himself but whatsoever ye shall he shall hear that shall he speak that means he has ears correct whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will open you up to revelation that's another ministry he will show you that's why many people say how do you know these things is it not the same bible we are reading the bible says he will show you he will show you isaiah said in the year king Uzziah died i isaiah i saw what other people did not see ezekiel while he sat at the brook of the river his eyes were open suddenly tell you there are impartations going on as i'm talking because i'm already sensing his presence i can sense when he comes in different dimensions Behold, I show you mighty things, say the Spirit of God. I'm calling you to rise higher. Higher, say the Spirit of God. I cause you to understand my ways. Hear the voice of the Spirit. Say the Spirit of the Lord. I'm doing a quickening in you. A quickening. A quickening, say the Spirit of God. I'm doing a quickening in you. And you will understand my precepts. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again, Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come to me, now arise, come to your resting place, you and the ark of your mind, and when and we will be told your righteousness celebrate your life
Jesus. Jesus. The apostle speaking said, That which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. I am showing you the reality of his person. It's not just a religious diet. The Holy Spirit is real. You can know him. He can guide you. When you allow his ministry in your life, you will look like a God in the earth. Is the secret to prosperity. Is the secret to increase. Is the secret to lifting. He will make you an awesome wonder when you allow his ministry in your life. Hallelujah. Let's see a few of his other ministries we have to round up. Isaiah 61. did not come from you. This was the prophecy about Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because He has anointed me, He empowers you to do the following, to preach good tidings. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, it takes the Holy Ghost to bind up hearts that are broken. He had sent me to proclaim liberty. That's why everywhere you go with His presence, there must be liberty. The Bible says, now the Lord is that Spirit. And where that Spirit of the Lord is, anywhere, there must be liberty. That's why we sing those songs about breaking chains and all of that. And the opening of prison. Who are these prisoners? They are working physically, but they are in prison. They are working alive. Their hands are free, but spiritually they are in prison. And the Bible says, when it comes upon you, you will open them up. This is what I'm doing. Light. It says, Allah, Isaiah 60. Shine. Not because you want to stand for your light. That illumination, when it comes it takes you out of religion when it comes it takes you out of struggling you will begin to find explanations to a lot of things that are happening in your life let's continue 61 verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God in partnership with him to comfort you now see his ministry again. All those who mourn. Let's continue. Verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Listen. Do you know what that means? To tell them today is your day of liberty. He says to appoint the day. Appoint it. And give unto them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they may be called the oaks or trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Mark 16 from verse 15. This was Jesus speaking again. Mark 16. And Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the systems, the systems, the strata of human activities, and preach. Take this value system, not just an evangelism message. Hallelujah. When he says, Go into all the world, the Greek word, word here is cosmos. Go into the media, infiltrate the education sector, infiltrate politics, go into all the systems go with a value system go with a backing of the holy ghost take a message take a mandate take a value system take it into that system this was what jesus said not what we are doing today and preach the gospel to every creature verse 16 or 17 let's go to 17 and these signs 
by reason of the Holy Ghost shall follow them that believe. Sign number one, in my name they shall cast out devils. Number two, there will be a strange communication between this breed of people. They will speak languages that are not given unto men. Isaiah began to speak. He said, For with stammering lips and another tongue shall they praise me. Wherein it is written, This is the rest and the refreshing. Hallelujah. They will speak with new tongues. Verse 18. They shall take up serpents. Look at me. Remember, this was the mystery that the Lord was showing Moses. He said, Throw your rod. It was a sign of dominion. That means they will have dominion. It didn't just mean they will carry literal serpents. He told Moses, throw your rod. And it became a snake. He said, hold it by the tail and lift it up. Are you getting me? There was a prophecy in Genesis. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. What that means is, if they come across a revelation that wants to contaminate them, there will be an immunity of the spirit that can shield them from the effect. It means physical poison, but it, this is a spiritual language. If they drink anything, remember Jesus said, it is not what enters a man. Is that in your Bible? So if for any reason, they innocently come across an atmosphere where there is error, there is a shifting of the spirit that will prevent from entering error he said they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover Jesus said this Jesus said this he was speaking to the disciples before he would leave Matthew 28 28 he was speaking to the disciples before he would leave Telling them what would happen by reason of the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit will soon round up wherever we stop. And then we'll just pray for this morning. Okay, yeah, 18. That's right. Very true. God bless you. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. The word power there is a wrong translation. It's all authority. It comes from the Greek word exousia. All authority in heaven and in the earth has been given unto me. Hallelujah. Verse 19. 19. Go therefore. Go therefore. And teach all nations. Baptizing them. He was not just talking about water baptism. Bring them. The word baptism comes from the word baptizo. Immerse them into a, an experience in the name of the Father. This is a revelation on his own. In the name of the Son. This is a revelation on his own. And in the name of the Holy Ghost. It's not just in the name of the Father, of the Son. What does that mean to you? Why not just say in the name of God? Why did he mention them? Because this is the God of Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, Abraham was in a similitude of God the Father. Isaac was in a similitude of God the Son. Jacob was in a similitude of God the Holy Ghost. That's why it's called in the Old Testament. He was in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now in the New Testament, it's God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. There is a revelation. We can't begin to go there now. There is a revelation. See? This is the truth that you know that will make demons run away when they see you. They won't just run away because you have a Christian name. Because let me tell you something. Every time you receive revelation, your spirit man illuminates. The illumination increases. Are you getting me? It is that light. That light. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness. Where does it come from? This is the mystery of setting people free. So you come with a light. And Paul speaking to the church in Corinth said it this way. He said, God who had commanded light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to cause us to see the knowledge of the glory of God as it is on the face of Jesus Christ. You will only arise and shine when your light comes. 
that light is illumination revelation this is what you are receiving something is happening to your spirit you will suddenly stand up and watch the change that you came here with you you grow out of certain situations just by there are two ways to bind satan one is by prayer the other is by revelation the most permanent way of binding satan is knowledge are you getting my point now knowledge Hosea began to lament in chapter 4 and verse 6. He said, my people, although they are my people, they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why the Bible says, get wisdom. Get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will put a crown of glory and ornament upon your head when thou dost embrace her. He said, doth not wisdom cry. These are mysteries in the spirit see, and say there is a path which no fowl, no falcon has seen. Although they are high in the altitude of the heavens, they are unable to see certain things. He said there is a path which the whelps of the lion, the king of the jungle, but he has not gotten into. But the Holy Ghost can show you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very quickly, let me talk about what we call new birth or what you in the language we call born again very quickly just touch it quickly time is gone the church in nigeria has been deceived greatly by this thing we call new birth so we just tell people just come up lord jesus lord jesus and the person is even strolling i receive you i receive you to be the lord of my life lord of my life and today, today, I confess him, I confess him in Jesus' name. The person is pinching his friend and laughing. And he goes back convincing himself that he's born again. Listen. And when you ask him, are you born? Of course now. Are you born? I'm born again. And he will argue it to death. There are many people who are not saved. Are you getting my point? Because when you are saved, something happens to you. And that thing that happens is not hidden. It must be obvious. Are you getting my point? So somebody is born again. He's still sleeping around, drinking around, smoke, doing everything he used to do. The only bridge in between them was that he answered an altar call. And then they said, oh yeah, write your name here. I'm not saying those things are wrong. He now wrote his name. Joseph, James. Then he, we can even complicate it when he attends a baptism class. He attends a baptism class. And now they go and soak him in water. He comes out. They give him a certificate and this guy is not known in heaven are you hearing me see let me tell you if we don't bring this teaching and help the body of christ understand what salvation is many people will go to hell am, am i making sense to you bless the lord oh my soul oh Worship his holy Sing like never before Oh my soul Worship your holy What does it mean to be saved? What does it really mean to be saved? Hallelujah What does it mean to be saved? John 3 verse 5 a very intelligent rabbi a teacher of the law came to Jesus and said something very powerful John 3 he said to him I say unto thee this was Jesus now except a man be what verse 3 sorry verse 3 notice jesus said two things here please listen i want to explain to you I, I wish we had time but i have to stop somewhere because we need to pray i wanted to stop at the baptism of the holy spirit then we can continue jesus said this he was speaking to the man who came to him remember the teacher of the law he came to him secretly he said we all know that you are what you are the master for no man can do these things except god be with him right verse 3 and jesus answered and said unto him 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be what? Except a man be, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Now, he himself, you don't need to explain it. He himself explains it again because the guy was confused. Verse 4, sir. The guy was confused. What is born again? And this was his interpretation. How can a man be born when he's old? So this guy was confused. He obviously did not understand what Jesus was saying. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5. Jesus explains. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except be a man be born of and except he be born of what and he will not i want to surprise you everybody look up please get this mystery i can kneel down and beg you listen the bible says there are three that bear witness in the earth what is that the spirit the water and the blood notice blood was not mentioned here are you getting my point are you I just want to know that you are following. The way everybody is watching, as if you are in a cinema or watching a movie. Hallelujah. Now listen. You know what the blood of Jesus does for you? The blood of Jesus, if you want to understand the mystery of salvation, go back to the nation of Egypt and look at what happened to Israel. Are you getting my point? It was a prophetic type. It was an adumbration of what will happen. What was the first thing that happened? They were in Egypt. That's a type of sin. Are you getting my point? A deliverer comes with a message, which is a type of a preacher, and tells that spirit stopping them in that situation. God said, let there be an exodus of my people. Is that true? After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. But there was one more plague. Don't turn there. In Exodus 11 verse 1, he said, Yet one more plague will I bring upon Pharaoh and the nation of Israel. After that, he will let you go. What was the last sign? Blood. Is that true? Now watch this. I want to show you certain things that will open your eyes. Notice that they said, Put the blood where? In the lintel of the man. What? I hope you realize the personal contribution of the people was not involved in that salvation. Are you getting my point? Are you understanding me? What that means is, assuming one, two, three, four, five, assuming five of you were in a house, even if you are a wicked man, if there was blood, it will pass you and you will not die. That was a symbol of grace. They didn't do anything on their own part. Are you understanding me? All they needed to do was the house that covered them it should have blood so when the angel of death passed over and came to goshen he found out that somebody had already killed the people in goshen because the job of that angel was to see blood is that true but when he came he found that somebody had already died in their place a lamb so he passed by and went to egypt where there was no blood and brought blood out of there are you getting my point But, so with that blood being shed, what happened? Do you know that the people did not really love God? Because remember when they went to the wilderness, they just made a golden calf. Huh? But they had come out of Egypt. Is that true? That is a type of what you do when you come out here. Are you getting me? The blood opens the way for you to begin, not end. Get this. There is a lot of error in the body of Christ. I'm telling you, please hear me. If you listen to me, your spiritual experience will be a qualitative one. There are many people who they tell them, just come and confess and recite. When you are done, the, the pastor is sleeping around, the brother is sleeping around, they don't care, there is no business, nobody is growing. They say, we are born again, we are going to heaven. I tell you, many people will be surprised and shocked except the truth is restored to the body of christ there are many people in self-deceit there are many pastors that are not born again you can go to school and read theology and be ordained people have given explanations 
I, I can sleep with this sister. It's not my body that sleeps with her. I mean, it's not my spirit. It's my body. My body will die. My, this, is, this, is, this is the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Are you getting my... These things were shipped from America. That's where they brought them from. Look at what is happening to America right now. That you need to redefine marriage and say the marriage is not the union of two adults. People are marrying fishes, they are marrying anything. Look at the end of the revelation they brought. But there is an apostolic spirit rising in this country who say, no way. Carry your garbage away and let us focus and let's hear what the spirit of God will say. We are not criticizing them. We appreciate that which we have done. But we will not allow our wine to be mixed with water in the name of loyalty to a system or a set of people. The thing we do in many churches is see grace does not mean carelessness and stupidity we have abused the gospel of grace you can get my teachings the full gospel i did a series called the full gospel and in that series we examine the seven major doctrines that make up the nigerian church in that teaching i shared how these doctrines came about and the balance of the teachings and where the imbalance was because in the book of revelation he said come and i will show you the lamb's wife he said and he showed me a city a heavenly jerusalem coming and the bible says it was four square it was equal in length equal in breadth equal in depth no exaggeration so that was the basis of the teaching the full gospel hallelujah so that you will understand many people in the bid to explain grace how that okay the bible says it is of it is not of works lest any man should boast we just tell people it's okay it's grace it's grace just do anything if i sleep with this lady we're all like that it's grace god knows so we keep endorsing evil pastors keep deceiving their members and sleeping around looting money from people doing all kinds of things in the name of grace there is an accurate teaching of grace but many of what we embrace as grace message today have tentacles that must be cut away because that teaching is endorsing a lot of evil and is leading believers into perversion. Are you listening to me? The place is quiet now. The Bible says, be careful, let no man spoil you. Let no man deceive you. The people that are advocating this thing are not wicked people. They are sincere people. But you can be sincere and wrong. Hallelujah. So, they came out of Egypt. That was the first experience. The blood. Are you getting me? I want to show you why the blood was not mentioned here. Because without the blood, you cannot even begin to talk about the kingdom at all. Are you getting my point? Watch this. They came out of Egypt. That's a type of what you do here. But the Bible, they were not yet separated from Egypt. That means they could go back. Is that true? Notice when they started going, something happened. Pharaoh got angry and said, let's go back. And Are you seeing why many people who stand here still go back to Egypt? Because they have not left. There must be an experience of entering the water, the Red Sea. Are you getting my point? So they now got to the Red Sea. You will understand what Jesus was telling this man. That except you have that experience of passing through the water. So when they got to the Red Sea, what happened? The Egyptians were coming and the Red Sea opened up. Alright? When the Red Sea opened up, they entered. It was a type of baptism. Are you getting me now? When they entered and went to the other side, what happened? The water closed. No of Egypt coming to them again are you getting my point now now that was the second experience the third experience was their journey into Canaan the promised land and the Bible says although some people left Egypt is that true although they crossed the Red Sea how many got to Canaan how many Joshua it doesn't mean only two people it just means two people out of the generation that came out are you getting my point when you understand this this is what he was saying that except beyond that experience 
something must happen to you of the water and that water there talks of revelation of the blood of jesus he said ye are clean through the words that i've spoken unto you and this is part of the ministry of the holy spirit there are many people let me tell you brothers and sisters if you are truly born again there must be fruits of transformation when a woman gets pregnant does she come out to shout and tell everybody i slept with my husband today huh but after a few months can you hide it imagine a woman who claims she has been pregnant after three years you are not seeing anything he says i'm pregnant just be watching this is how many believers are oh i'm born again i'm born again i'm i'm attacking you because it's not out of criticism it's out of love are you getting my point so when things get bad you still run to a herbalist that's egypt baba do this do this this is the last time i won't come again the moment you do it and the breakthrough comes praise the lord stop praying for me that day you prophesied upon me yes sir and the pastor is there receiving the glory and dancing whereas these people are not born again then they become the elders of our assemblies and start legislating an open sepulchre for demonic activities to go out that's why there is no authentic power in our churches again but there's an army rising up from this nccf conference there's an army rising up there's an army rising up men of power who will enter the system break every chain break every chain break every chain they will break every chain break every chain hallelujah listen this teaching is not to make you get up and start you know this is every time i teach i try to balance because when people hear the word like this, like the foxes of Samson, there are many people who deal without knowledge. You now run to pastors and run to everybody and start castigating everybody. These men have tried. Before you criticize them, get to their place and see how easy it is. Are you getting my point? So this is not a teaching to downplay others. It's just to tell you we appreciate them. However, there is a higher realm. Their generation is a type of Eli. And the Bible says the eye of Eli started becoming dim. But there was Samuel. He slept close to the ark. So he started hearing a voice. Eli did not hear that voice. Because his eye, which is a source of illumination, has started becoming dim. I hear the chains falling. Chains Why just stop here? The Holy Spirit comes into your life to guide you. The Holy Ghost comes into your life to instruct you. The first thing He does, listen, as an unbeliever, He comes to convict you. As you're listening to me right now, there are people. Who the Holy Ghost is convicting. You are now saying, wow, so this is how it is. That means I really need a fresh experience with God. Whether you are, whatever your post is, is irrelevant. I'm not talking about, I'm going to make an altar call. That altar call is not for, you have never come to get born again. Uh -uh. You want to begin the reality of the kingdom experience. And you can be a pastor for many years and not have the authentic experience of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Where the fruit of the Spirit will begin to walk in you. Where you don't just turn and say, Curse me, I curse you. How do they say it? God, no go vex. All, the, all those dirty languages, all those vulgar things. People in their phones have all kinds of God, ungodly music, pornography. Don't tell me you are born again. That's not true. Something must happen to you. Are you getting me? When our fathers of old, but I'm not talking about religious piety and religious ways of trying to walk holiness in the f that's another balance on his own i don't even want to go there because there are a lot of people who think religiosity is holiness no that's another dimension of imbalance it's another error of the holiness gospel too 
but I'm talking about an experience. If his spirit is in me, I must love what he loves. And I must hate what he hates. Jacob looked at Potiphar's house, wife, and said, I cannot do this thing against God first. Believers in Nigeria are so vulnerable. Vulnerable to everything. Yet we just say it's grace. It's grace. Many people know him as savior. This morning I'm reintroducing him to you as king. He's not just savior, but he is king of all kings. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit convicts you like he's doing to you now. When you have this salvation experience, what we call born again now. His next ministry, listen. His next ministry is what the Bible calls regeneration, transformation. The word regeneration comes from the word gene. Remember, biology students, regening, a regening, changing your spiritual composition. And that is the ministry of the word. Man shall not live, he's not sustained by bread, his sensory perceptions alone, but by revelation. This word you are receiving is changing you. Are you getting me? This is what Jesus was doing to the disciples. Are you seeing why Moses changed now? Moses was in the presence of God. When God kept talking to him, the word was changing him. Are you seeing that? It affected his physical appearance. When he came down, he did not even know he had changed. All of a sudden, he became a God, even to the people. This is what happens. You stay in an atmosphere of revelation, something happens. Ye are clean through the word that I've spoken to you. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. It says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer what? Your spirit? No. Your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable act of worship. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed. Don't bend to this demonic system of Babylon. This system of cosmos this social system don't conform to it he said but be ye transformed How? by the renewing of your mind that's the ministry of the holy spirit he brings upon the world opens you up to a realm of illumination and he begins to introduce you to a new culture it's called the culture of the kingdom so that a christian in joss a christian in bielsa a Christian in Lagos and a Christian in France when you bring them together the disparity should not be much are you getting what I'm saying if the Holy Ghost is the one really doing what we claim he is doing look at me an evil person in Abia I don't mean the little cultural differences I mean the core values an evil person in where again Enugu for instance an evil person in London, an evil person in India, an evil person in Pakistan, when they come together, do you think they will have too many things that are different in terms of culture? Are you seeing that? Because there is a value system that they have been baptized into. When a Yoruba person, even in France, sees his mother, what will he do? He will prostrate. France notwithstanding. So that statement of when you are in Rome, behave like the romans do when you come to zion behave like what that thing is a religious fallacy from the pit of hell whether i'm on jeans whether i'm on suit i'm a kingdom ambassador i represent one government whether i'm gisting i only gist the word i only choke the word you never find me watching polluted garbages I'm a man on a mission. The destiny of generations are upon my shoulder. And the Bible says, No man that warreth entangled himself with civilian affairs. This is my cry. This is the battle cry this morning. This is the cost implication of carrying the presence of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Many of us want it this way and want it our way. But this morning, we are going to pray. Hallelujah. I may touch on the baptism in the evening but let's just talk here transformation so when the holy ghost comes upon your life that baptism 
is not just to give you gifts so you start laying hands you know that's what we have been taught that the moment the holy ghost comes just go and start healing the sick or because you got filled with the holy ghost and you touch somebody and the person fell you just say wow i'm calling to ministry fire or no no that language that tongues you are seeing that tongues is not it was meant to achieve something in you we will discuss it in the evening if you don't know what tongues is for this is why a lot of people just pray and they finish and do stupid things and you are wondering who were these people talking to you see why the world looks at us we put all kinds of speakers in front of our churches and the market women say hell allow my customers talk to me i can't even hear them and the moment we finish as we share the grace we come out and do the same things those tongues were meant to say why will god give us new languages is english not enough i will show you in the evening that what god did was to reverse what happened in the tower of babel genesis 11 he divided their tongues and it was the verse that happened in the book of Acts. Rise up on your feet. I'm waiting for you. Please pray. Let's just have a few minutes of prayer. And then we are out. You don't end the meeting just by leaving. We pray first. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. Listen. The first prayer point, just three or four prayer points. The first prayer point is, Lord, take me out of any error that is not you. Lift your voice and pray. number two quickly before i make the altar call we are going to pray for the church in nigeria including your church your local assembly and your pastor you are going to say lord let light come there are innocent people who love god but they learn from one man to one person and they are in error lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to make an altar call. Don't close your eyes. There's no reason to. It's a very serious altar call. Listen. There are many of us here who went from yesterday night. You know that this thing I've said, you need a genuine experience. Because what you have been doing is sincerely not an authentic experience. You may have come out to be born again. You may even be a pastor. That's not an issue. This one is a special prayer to say, Lord, I'm ready. If it means undoing everything to 
will start an experience with you hallelujah are you ready i'll just count because of time just one to four no matter how many there are spaces here you can just come and kneel before god and cry one hallelujah listen when the bible says the fruit of the spirit is love and all of if it is not at work in your life something is missing you cannot be a leader that way are you getting my point all this gossiping backbiting unforgiveness there must be power that will take you out of that realm hear me the last prayer point everybody including myself you will pray it you're going to say lord seeds of unforgiveness seeds of gossiping all of these things let your light take me out of that realm i'm tired i want an authentic experience at me before you go back to your seat it is not an issue of trying not try it will take the holy ghost to help you are you getting me people will annoy you even after we share the grace now it's not natural to just look at them and love but there is something god does in you flesh dies the bible says in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 he said this i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desire you can't be speaking vulgar languages, languages that are not of the kingdom. In the name of westernization, that's what you learned on your campus. Languages, words are prophetic. Whether you know it or not, they have prophetic implications. See what your words are doing to your life. He told you, he said, has thou commanded thy money? You can't afford to kill yourself all kinds of nasty words that are learned from nigerian films american films soup operas don't say it does not matter this is what preachers have made people to feel i'm not talking of religiosity i'm talking of the spirit power of the holy ghost taking you to a mountain where you are immune from anything that like go and sleep with this sister no. there is an ability of the holy spirit the Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? There is a hill. When you stand here, sickness cannot come to your body again. It's not the issue of claiming divine health. It's not claiming, I'm healthy, I'm healthy. That thing is a frustration for nothing. Rise up through revelation. 
there is a time you can stay that no cause and no you can touch you it's not by claiming it's not by claiming no it's by revelation taking you to that realm and you stand there. this is what jesus demonstrated when he climbed the mountain elijah appeared moses appeared and he was there by anything in this realm let me pray for you we have to close now listen please listen just one little announcement whatever you have to do don't miss this night i'm not going to be teaching for long because i want to minister hallelujah please and please i perceive more than ever before that god is going to visit people and visit families in very dramatic ways this is the hallmark of the apostolic anointing he told people he said god bearing witness unto them with signs wonders hallelujah praise god all these terminal diseases around cancer hiv all these useless things barrenness all kinds of things that kill people huh? must leave you know, the bible says no inhabitant in zion when you are outside of zion it must happen to you but when you are in zion there is an atmosphere it's a divine immunity tonight we will confront gates i tell you are you hearing me this is we will confront gates and tonight there will also be baptisms will be imparting the gifts of the spirit many of you are doing ministry without the gifts of the spirit you are just struggling and getting angry every time you don't have something you will be angry when you see somebody walking there's no need to be angry it's available it's not for money you don't buy it it's yours for the taking so if i were you as you prepare for other sessions let your heart be ready when you come and sit down let your friend not be pinching and disturbing you tell him please please i came for business tonight. because from this night back you will go back to your homes and judge the mount of Israel. hallelujah father let your spirit walk on these ones my brothers and sisters who have come out acknowledging their need for an authentic spiritual experience i pray in the name of jesus that even in this conference many many people even outside of god i pray by the power of the holy spirit that they will never be the same and we thank you in advance for the mighty healings the deliverances the breakthrough the release of prosperity listen one of the things that i'm going to be causing in the evening is this thing called the spirit of poverty listen poverty is a spirit you can do any business you know to do in the world if that spirit is not taken from your life and your lineage you will struggle forever hallelujah thank you jesus we give you all the praise please rise back to your seat bless you